we're just gonna do a very basic warm up. Okay, first one, we're gonna do slow marches and you wanna get your leg, knee as high as you can and reach up. So reach up and back. You're warming up your hip flexors, getting some shoulder mobility. Try to tuck in your belly for Instagram, right? But that's how you activate your transverse abdominis muscles, which stabilizes your spines. And really try to reach up and back and stop. Good job. That's the end of the clinic. See you guys next week. <laughs> All right, next one, we're gonna jog in place. Move at your level. If you can only do low knees, that's great. If you can do medium knees, great. If you can do high knees, great. Okay, 30 seconds, go. Get your arms moving, shuffle your arms. Steady breathing. 10 more seconds, keep going. Get some conditioning in there. Get your arms, shuffle your arms. And stop. Catch your breath. Next one, we're gonna get on shoulder range of motion. Two 90 degree angles, and we're rolling them forward, okay? Start small, progress to big, and try to get your shoulder blades moving really big, everything forward. Okay, and try tucking your chin. We always wanna maintain neutral neck posture. Okay, reverse. If you, any, if you hear any cracking or crunching, that's okay. A lot of people ask, if, is that gonna cause injury? No. If it doesn't hurt, that's okay. That's all that matters. All right, last one, seal jack. Try to open up your chest and alternate which one's on top and bottom. So that is range of motion, that's heart rate. The single most important factor for injury prevention is increasing core body temperature, right? That's what creates elastic tendons. That's what makes your muscles more pliable. So you wanna make sure you're first you get your heart rate up in a gradual manner. Okay, now we're gonna go into a prehab section. Prehab just means, we also often think about injury prevention as rehab. We wait for us to roll our ankle before we do anything about it. But a lot of these movements we're gonna to learn today are hopefully going to decrease injuries by a significant percentage. Okay, the first one is called prone Y cuffs. Pretend this is the floor. So I'm gonna lay down on my belly in just a moment. I'm going to tuck in my chin and bring my shoulders back. I'm gonna to touch my hands as high as I can without touching the floor. Roll my hands so that my palms are up and then cross. And then alternate which one's in front. Okay, the whole time I'm not touching the ground with my hands. Okay, we're gonna do those in sets of 10 seconds. All right, so everyone lie on their chest. All right, ready? Let's go. Let's go for 10 seconds at a time. Tucking your chin so you're looking at the floor. Don't worry, they clean these floors pretty regularly, so you don't gotta worry about inhaling bad stuff. The only thing you have to worry about maybe is smelling your own bad breath. Cross your wrist at the back. Shoulder blades should feel very mobile. A lot of crunchiness, especially for those who work desk jobs, right? And stop. Okay, you're gonna relax. We're gonna transition into the next one, which is our hip mobility reach. So if you can face me a little bit, you can stay on the ground. We're gonna get into a long lunge position. So if my right foot is forward, my left hand is on the ground, I'm gonna reach with my right hand underneath and then open up and reach upward, okay? I'm gonna go one side at a time. If you're a little bit more advanced, you can actually keep your knee off the ground to get more tension on your rear hip flexor there, okay? Let's all, everyone go right foot forward, left hand on the ground, right hand reaching through underneath as far as I can and then extend and reach upward, squeeze your shoulder blades together at the top, okay? And we're exhaling at the top, inhaling at the bottom. Try to form a straight line. Make sure we're exhaling at the top, inhale at the bottom. This is great for hip range of motion, thoracic rotation. Your thoracic is your upper, upper spine. And make sure you synchronize breathing. Breathing helps you get into a deeper range of motion, Okay, slowly switch, ready? Left foot forward. And go, reach forward the other side. Make sure you inhale at the bottom, exhale at the top. These are great exercises to do every hour at the workplace. It only takes a minute, but it will significantly make you feel better throughout the day, reduce injuries, increase range of motion. Nice job, and stop, go and stand up slowly. Last one, this is one of my favorite exercises for ankle, knee, and hip stability. I'm very proud to say I have not rolled an ankle in over five years since implementing these exercises into my workout. I've had tweaks here and there, 
but I've, I've never had to sit out due to injury. Okay, so I'm gonna balance on one leg. Soft knee means just bent, and soft hip means slightly bent. I'm gonna reach up, okay? And if you need, you can actually do this. That's training your body how to balance, okay? Reach up, kick my leg back, and reach toward the floor without touching it, okay? Reach up, reach down, okay? Go ahead, balance on your left leg. If you're a little more advanced, you can lift your knee really high. If you're struggling to balance, just try to go through a smaller range of motion. So you don't have to reach up as high, you don't have to reach down as far. But if you have a wobbly leg, that's really good. Those are all the vestibular, the joint muscles, all the little guys that we ignore that are working and coordinating together. So wobbly is good. You train your body how to figure out how to balance on its own. Try to keep your knee in line with your foot and the arch of your foot should feel like it's on fire. That's another ignored muscle, right? We have all this arch support that turns off those, that foot, that arch muscle. All right, rest. How many of you guys felt like your, your toes were just trying to rip the floor apart or your, your yeah. So it's, it's another, I, I, mean, I, we, I definitely am a firm believer of volleyball shoes, but when we don't have to wear arch support, I highly recommend not using it because otherwise your arch is never gonna get required to flex, okay? Let's switch to the other side, ready? Reach up, reach down without touching, okay? If you're a little more advanced, you could try to form a straight line with your back and your leg. And inhale at the top, exhale at the bottom. You're doing great, guys. Try to keep your back straight. Otherwise, I'm gonna call your mom and tell you you have terrible posture, and she'll give you a virtual smack in the, through the FaceTime. We're gonna keep going until we feel that burn on the foot. It's okay to hobble, it's okay to hop. Hopping is good, right? That's what you actually have to do in a game. You have to hop around a little bit to maintain balance. Let's go for five more seconds. Give me your best five seconds. So that was our prehab circuit. Once you do this regularly, it should only take about 10 minutes on your own. This you can do this as your warm up. Okay, now we're gonna do activation. So our muscles, they are stimulated through electricity that's sent through our brain, right? So, uh, some type of electrical impulse. Some people think, well, you guys ever seen like a really skinny player jump super high and hit the crap out of the ball, like just really springy? Anyone seen that? And then you see someone really muscular who doesn't jump very high. Why does that happen? Happier? Happier? <laughs> Heavier. Heavier? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there is something to do with body weight, but if you look at football players, 240 pounds, 42 inch vertical, right? How does that happen? What it, well, the reason why is the, a greater proportion of your muscle fibers are being contracted and stimulated, okay? And so activation means whatever muscle I currently have, I'm gonna find a way to get the greatest amount of stimulation because that's how you produce force, right? It's not necessarily how many muscle fibers you have, it's how, what you do with the current muscle fibers that you do have, okay? So as we're doing these activation exercises, I really want you to squeeze hard and visualize the muscles that we're trying to activate. Okay, so first one is going to be a glute hand bridge. First one, I'm going to lay on my back, heels in front of my knees, tuck my belly in to neutralize my lower back, push off the floor. Level one is straight line from shoulders to knee. Level two is alternating holds. Okay, level three is straight leg. All right, so those are the three levels you can choose from. All right, we're gonna do it for 30 seconds. Ready? On your backs. Start with your heels in front of your knees. So the only, only body part contact the floor are your heels. All right, form a glute bridge. That means get your butt, form a straight line, tuck in your belly button. Ready, go. Choose your level. If just holding this position is hard, if you're vibrating and shaking, then that's good. Hold it there and stop, relax, good job. If we did this correctly, we should feel a really strong contraction in our glute and our hams, okay? I like to call that the, the Kardashian exercise. Okay, next one is for upper body. So we wanna stimulate core and shoulder stability here. So I'm gonna get into a push-up position. Level one is, if this is challenging, then just hold this. Level two is touching my shoulder, alternating. Level three is reaching circle back, 
reaching, circle back. Level four is doing it with a narrow stance and you'll feel why, okay? So those are the four, those are the four levels. Ready? Push a position. Ready? Go. Pretend you're balancing a cup of water on your lower back. Do not shift your hips. Everything is controlled. Five more seconds. And stop. Next exercise is to help uh, develop our patellar tendon. Does anybody have jumper's knee or sharp pain below their kneecap? Any show of hands? Okay. This is one of the most effective ones. You can do this with dumbbells. Uh, you can put a backpack on, you can put, hold you know, two milk jugs, whatever you want for, uh, for weight, okay? So this is isometric. So that means we're balancing on the ball of my foot for both legs. And I wanna go as low as I can. This is level one. If this hurts, then you have to start at a higher level until you can build back down, okay? So I would say this is probably level one, two, three. And then four is oscillating where all my weight is here. So I'm oscillating, only, 20, only about 10% is on the back leg. So it doesn't matter which one you start with, make sure your heel's off the floor. We're gonna try to do it for 30 seconds. Ready, set, go. Upright torso, trying to lean forward. This helps develop your Achilles tendon. Make sure your heel's off the floor. You wanna do a short range of motion. Yeah, your ankle should feel like it's shaking if your heel's off the floor. This also helps develop your Achilles tendon. And stop, relax, shake it out. Here's a quick physiology question. Does anyone know why tendons are white and why muscle fibers are red? Or I mean, they're, they're kind of like deep purple. Low blood supply, yeah. And that's why tendons take a long time to heal. Like if someone punches you really hard and you get a black bruise in your muscle, it'll probably heal in like two weeks. If you tweak a tendon or if you jam something, it takes like a year because it has very low blood supply. And so this is one of the best ways to promote blood flow into the tendons here. Okay, let's switch legs, ready? And go. Chest up, steady breathing at the top, and make sure your knee is over your toe or past it. That's how we shift our body weight and really place a lot of tension on the tendon. And stop. Great job. All right, last one. So your Achilles tendon is what attaches your calf to your heel. Another really common injury, does anyone have any sharp pain or achiness on their Achilles tendon in the back of their ankle, anybody? Yeah, it happens. So low level hops is one of the best ways to develop not only elastic ability, but also endurance and strength in your tendons, okay? So you're gonna hop in place, okay? Just like that, we're not max jumping, that's level one. Level two is alternating. You're either going wide and then scissor, or you're just changing up the shapes to get different angles, okay? But we're gonna do it for 30 seconds. Ready, set, go. You can change shapes, you can scissor, you can go out, but we're doing this for a long time. 30 to 45 seconds, you can cross your legs. You can twist a little bit. Try to stress the tendon at different angles and try to be light and springy. 20 more seconds, right? We're building that endurance. Low level hops, steady breathing. Five seconds, keep going and stop. All right, let's give yourselves a round of applause. That was really great. Let's bring it in for our very first water break. So uh, how, how many of you have participated in a team sports before organized sports. You know, we do try to develop that camaraderie, especially for people who haven't had that experience. You know, everything is a lot about togetherness and to make sure that we stay in a positive mindset. So let's bring in the center. We're gonna put our fists and we're a part of team elevate. So someone can say elevate on three and we all cheer elevate, okay? Anyone wanna lead us in the cheer? I got you. All right, elevate good. On three. One, two. Okay. 